Hey everybody, it's Ron Jackson, and um, this is a Patreon lesson that um, I'm actually doing for YouTube, but everybody can watch this, but my patrons actually get the lesson written out. Uh, that's the, um, you know, the advantages of being a member of my Patreon, which is Ron Jackson Music, like all my handles. So today we're going to be talking about the chromatic scale, okay, and different fingerings for it and how you should practice it. I, uh, you know, it's a very common scale. Um, it, it's not particularly a scale that's like, um, what's the word, used musically when you're playing jazz, but you, you use a lot of chromatics in jazz. So, I, I mean, I like to throw it in there and play a little bit avant-garde stuff. So, and things like that, playing out and, you know, playing passing tones between, uh, you know, in chord scales and stuff like that. So the chromatic scale is very, very important, okay? So, um, so there's some easy fingerings for this scale. I just did the fingering that was actually, you stay in position and you do stretches up the neck like this, up the strings actually, and go across like this. And when you go backwards, you use a stretch like this. So, so you can see that better. So that's one way of printing the chromatic scale, but I want to show you this more in depth right now. So that I actually did a, a TikTok slash Instagram slash, um, you know, YouTube short on the um, the easy chromatic scale, okay? Now the chromatic scale, just so you know, is just a series of half steps, we call them. So it's basically one fret at a time. You, can, you know, you can do a chromatic scale with one finger, just go up the neck and go backwards, or whatever way you want to do. You could do patterns, etc. Of course, it's much harder with your one finger. But you can see you can see that I'm going every fret, okay? And we call it half steps, or, you know, um, basically, you know, whole steps are every two frets. And I did, I actually, I, I did a little um, video about about different kinds of intervals. So you have the whole step, half step, minor thirds, all that stuff. You should know all that in a way. But the, you know, the easiest, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, interval on the guitar is actually the, the half step. Jaws, you know, the half step. It sounds very. So it's kind of cool. So. The easy chromatic scale is actually, you do four notes per string like this. Okay, I'm starting on the fifth string A because that's easy for most guitar players to find. You should be able to play this everywhere. So basically you, do, you go four adjacent frets like this. One, two, three, four. Then you skip to the next string, the fifth string. That, so that's the sixth string. And then you go one fret be below the, the first note that you did. Go one fret this way. Below is going toward the nut right here. This is going up, down on the guitar. Some people, but you know, it looks like you're going up when you're going this way. I mean, it looks like you're going down, they say, and going up, but it's really up, down in pitch. But when you do this pattern this way, it's going up, but you look like you're going down okay so it's kind of interesting some some of these funny fingerings you get on guitar so you're gonna go one two three four and then you're gonna go one fret that way okay on the fifth string because you're on the fourth fret now then third fret on the fourth string so i went down one fret again then i went to the third string on the second fret now i'm going to stay on the uh second string on the same fret because of the tuning of the guitar. Okay, and then we get to the first fret of the first string, okay? So now we end, uh, you know, we don't end, uh, when you go to the, to the fourth finger here, we're not at the end of the scale two octaves, okay? That scale is actually two octaves long. So it looks like this, watch. You 
you end right there with your fourth finger. So the last time, the last pattern you, to start with the next pattern going backwards, you're gonna have to go one fret up by a slide with your fourth finger. Okay? Then you go backwards, watch this. So when you go backwards this time, it looks like this. Now you're gonna go up, up one fret this time to the second string. Now this is four, three, two, one. You see that? Four, three, two, one on the third string on the same fret now. Okay, remember on the second and third string, you stay on the same fret. Then go up one fret and go on the fourth string. And then one fret up on the fifth string. And then one fret up on the sixth string. And you end on the A. So that's what that scale looks like. I'm going to play it all the way up and down. Up, going this way would look sound. And up, up is this way, down is this way in pitch. So let me go real slow. pretty good with no rehearsal so <laughs> so that's the the easy chromatic scale you kind of like you use the same fingering and you go across backwards okay you do it that way now keep in mind when I'm actually playing this this scale I try to keep my fingers close so when I'm actually pressing on each note I try to do that and I keep my fingers down so you learn good habits about keeping your fingers close to the fingerboard. Okay, you see what I'm doing? So when I put these fingers down, all my fingers stay down. Okay, here. I mean, I don't do it all the time, but when, I, when I'm practicing, I try to do that. So when I'm starting to real play, play real fast, I do it naturally without thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, I'm kind of like plowing through that really quick, but that's the idea to keep your fingers close so you can play really quick and clean. Okay, well, clean as possible. <laughs> so, so that's the easy chromatic scale. The hard one, well, I'm not gonna say it's hard. Uh, you know, everything is hard. I think even the easy stuff is just to play in the same position. And it's basically I learned this from um, my William Levitt book that I always talk about. Um, when I went to Berkeley, even though I wasn't a performance major, I had this book and I was, you know, taking, I was a composition major and I was still taking guitar lessons. And I should have been really just taking guitar lessons, actually. But anyway, um, the the, uh, the the more complicated chromatic scales, you stay in position like this. Instead of going to the next fret down and go, doing the same finger, you're gonna go, you're gonna do a stretch with your first finger, stay in position. Then you go, then you're gonna go hit the fifth string in the fourth fret, then you're gonna slide into the back to the fifth fret of the fifth string. So you play the same pattern. See? Okay, and then you do the same thing here on the fourth string. Okay, and then the fourth fret, and then you slide in. Now it only changes when you get the second string, then you're gonna hit the second string just on the fifth fret, no slide up, no slide like this, okay? You're gonna go right into that and play the four fingers and then you're gonna slide up again on the first string. Now you can end right here, okay? If you wanna just do the octave, so it looks like this, watch this. I'll do it slower. Okay, I ended on the A, but I would go up to here usually. And then go backwards. 
So you can see the fingering, the same fingering. Even though it's passed an octave, this is an octave. These are two octaves. A to A into A. And then I do a minor third up so you can see the, the fingering. So I will start this fingering to do the four, three, two, one with the chromatic scale and then go, go backwards. Then I do the stretch here this time, okay? So you're gonna do four, three, two, one. Then when you get to the next string, which is the second string, you're gonna do a stretch and then go back to four. Now you stay on the third string on the same fret because that's where you don't do the stretch. That's when it gets weird between the second and third string because of the tuning. Okay. Now you do the stretch again. Go back to the fourth finger. Stretch. Okay. So watch this. So this is the whole the whole chromatic scale. I'm gonna go up two octaves and then a third so you can see it backwards. Watch this. Okay, so that's the more complicated chromatic scale. Okay, so um, I would practice that slow. I mean, um, I'm not quite warmed up, but, you know, because I'm teaching you and talking at the same time, but... You know, uh, you can practice this just going up and down, but you know, you don't want to play a chromatic scale uh, just up and down. I'm going to show you the different things you, you can do. So also remember, keep your fingers close like I'm doing. And when you go backwards, uh, I place the fingers down. I forgot to mention that earlier. When I play four, three, two, one, I place all my fingers down. It's kind of hard to do with the stress down, okay? It's kind of tricky, but my goal is when I'm doing four, three, two, one, or one, or one, two, two, one, two, three, four. When I press one, two, three, four, I keep all my fingers down. When I press four, three, two, one, I start with all my fingers pressed down. So you get speed when you're playing fast. You see how I keep my fingers really close? So these are good technical things to practice. Um, you know, I'm kind of stiff right now, but you know, you gotta loosen up because I'm playing and talking and playing a lot. So another thing you can practice with your chromatic scales is just so you don't play them just up and down the neck. Like a lot of guitar players, they when they first learn scales, all they do is play the scale like up and down in the same interval. You could do little patterns. You can go, um, you can go three notes at a time. Now, the hard part is to stay in position, you know, um, without moving the fingering, keeping the same fingering. I usually don't do that with this, with the uh, easy chromatic scale, because I usually don't play the chromatic scale like this. I usually do teach this to my beginners, the easy chromatic scale, because it's just easier to play, but that's not very logical when you're actually improvising. It's better to be playing in position, like I'm showing you with the different stretches, for, for true improvisation, okay? So I'll go like this. So I'll do three notes at a time. That's a great pattern. It's tricky. And backwards, you know, you can start any note. So these are triplets. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, so you can play, uh, you know, uh, three notes. I can go. You can go. I can go. So you can create any of your patterns. Sometimes I go backwards like this, two notes, and go up the scale. And you can go backwards.
So I'm doing, I'm doing, um, then I'm going down. If I play the same fret, I'm doing one fret and then going down one, two frets and doing the same thing. That's what it looks like if you stay on the same string. The hard part is to stay in position. And you can do four note patterns. And backwards. The stretch is, is kind of it's kind of tough to play. But see I'm using my fourth finger a lot there. So, it can be hard. Confusing too. Okay, and you can do, I mean, you can do all, do all kinds of combinations. You can do five notes at a time. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. 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 And backwards, I, I mean, I, I never practiced it this way. Actually, I need to practice it this way because I'm teaching you this. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, five, five. One, two, three, four, five. I can't even say it. <laughs> so, I mean, these are different ways to practice your chromatic scale. And you know what? I mean, when I was studying with Pat Martino, he would displace the scale with like these weird exercises. He would do it like, he would do it, like, let's say a C, then go to, down to a B. So this is, so let's say this is C, B, B flat, A. He would go like this. This is one of his cool patterns. He would go C, B, A, B flat, A. So it would go, it would sound like this. So that's what I just did. But I did it displace octaves, two octaves. So I mean, there's all kinds of ways to practice your chromatic scales, and if you imagine, if you have a great imagination, you know, chromatics are like the stuff to to practice, you know, and you can start like um, really getting into playing all that kind of um, those d different kinds of techniques with uh, uh, you know and cool lines by using chromatics. So it's all about your imagination, everybody. So that's an introduction to a chromatic um, the chromatic scale, and this is for my patrons on Patreon, and um, if you join my Patreon, you can actually um, get the sheet music for this uh, when you join, it's free. And I'm eventually gonna be putting this on my um, my website, ronjacksonmusic.com, so you can learn more about this. And um, thank you for very much for watching. My name is Ron Jackson. Um, please follow me everywhere at Ron Jackson Music, okay? Um, I'm, I have a Patreon, um, excuse me, I have an Indiegogo it's going to be starting on September 8th. So, you know, to help support my new album. So please support me there. Um, it's going to be on Indiegogo. Just search for um, Be Part of My New Album, I think it's called. Um, or, or something like that. I can't remember off, offhand, but just search for Ron Jackson. Um, and you'll see it there. It's going to be all over my, um, my um, YouTube channel. And I appreciate everybody, all my followers that are, you know, here. All my new followers, all my future followers. Follow me everywhere at Ron Jackson Music. Please subscribe, hit the button, and share with your friends. And I hope you learned something about chromatics, the chromatic scale today, and have a great night. There was no editing in this video. Bye-bye.